Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Professor Oleander, and thought we would do a couple of tutorials today. Because I still get a lot of questions from people about how to get started, how to do this, how to do that. Um, so I'm going to assume you've done all of your verifications, your you're entering your license and all that sort of stuff. So we're just going to spawn into the BNSF uh, Southwest US. You select that. We're on the extra board. We're just going to pick up Barstow Yermo. Barstow. And uh, get spawned in here. I'll turn that off for just a second. And you see that we're in the center of the map. Just going to make this one kind of short. Um, can, you know, not Control F11, Control F12 or shift F12 I should say to get us up in the air here you can see we're just in the center of Barstow I'm just gonna shift F2 and make sure I've got the traffic turned off so what we're gonna do is uh, just how to operate a train so I'm gonna go down here to the signal we're gonna go westbound because this is a it's a little bit more interesting going that way to show different different things you can do I'm going to hit the control F1, go into the train builder, and uh, pick a freight, freight locomotive. And um, I think I think for this one we'll do we'll do a 40-2. Uh, just because they are, you know, more interesting. We'll just pick up a couple of NS units. Actually, I'm going to clear this out. That was something I was doing earlier. We'll just pick a couple of NS units, and we got we got box cars. We'll just shift click all of these and just throw them over there. 3.0, that's going to be good enough. These are only uh, 3,000 horsepower units, so we'll just use a small train. So if you want to copy what I got there, that's these are the ones I'm going to use. We're just random reorder them to make it a little bit more interesting. Right click on the second locomotive to reverse it, and then place train. You see the ghost unit come up here and it's facing in the wrong direction so get on the other side here and we're going to spawn it in about right here we'll, we'll put it right here beside the light pole and there you go there's our train that we're going to be running all these box cars here now when you go to select the train you want to click in this area right here well you know a little bit neater than that um, yeah you want to click in this area don't click here don't click here you want to click think about where the fuel tanks are on these locomotives and just kind of click in that area same thing with the cars you want to click about center mass on them that way uh, that way they'll select so you click on your locomotive here you're gonna have this it's also gonna say the controlling unit is NS 3372 or whatever the lead unit is on your engine or in your train uh, if it doesn't and say for instance if you know if we pick this train and it said controlling unit was 3369 and you look at your lead unit and you say okay that's not the lead unit uh, either your face you're either on the wrong end of the train or uh, somebody has said it differently that's going to be mainly for multiplayer stuff so we're going to set this one back as the lead unit uh, we won't talk about a whole lot of this stuff in here, but uh, we'll go over the basics for it. I'm not going to go through, you know, all the switches and everything. We're just going to do basic startup and running it. So you want to auto start all locomotives. running auto circuit breaker will set the circuit breaker switches and the isolation switches auto MU and DP which is multiple unit and distributed power that hooks up all of your MU cables uh, if we had other units in the middle of the train that would also set them up for distributed power auto EOT will um, add the EOT to our train you see that we've got our EOT on there now go back to the other end um, and then we hit auto a AB which is the air brake cheat that uh, will recharge the system it also lines all of the angle cocks so that way we're good to go uh, while we're here we're gonna hit the tagger key 
and we want to pick this car and then shift click down here and uh, let me get over here so I can show you something you can either use the slider or you can just hit full we'll just use the slider for a second you see how the cars actually sit down on their springs so that's something that's new for v2 it also uh, one of the things that they've done is uh, they've made it where the doors are open whenever it's unloaded and they close whenever it's loaded so there you go so we've got the train fully loaded you see that our HPT is 3.0 uh, if I were to vary the load a little bit you see the the horsepower per ton go up there's 3.3 3.0 all right, so we're ready to get into the cab here. So Control F11 puts you in the seat. It is a little loud. Let me turn the uh, volume down just a bit. Turn that volume. You can just use this slider. I'm just going to turn it down just a bit. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn it up. And I'll just turn it down in my headset. Okay, so just kind of going around the horn. Uh, your readout gauges here you've got your uh, the white needle is your uh, equalizing reservoir red needle is your main uh, red needle on this one is your brake cylinder pressure white needle is the brake pipe this is your airflow gauge uh, this is how much air is going through the air of uh, the uh, brake pipe your amp meter this side is for braking effort this side is for power uh, we're not going to worry about too much about the switches. We are going to turn on our gauge lights, though. Your dynamic brake handle, throttle handle, reverser, front headlight, rear headlight, or I'm sorry, heater, front headlight, rear headlight. We don't worry about this too much. You can click on this one if you want to. We're just going to use the H key. Turn that, hit that twice, and you can actually see the ditch lights are on. Um, radio, this is our EOT, this is rear pressure, it's a little finicky right now. That's your distance counter, you can turn that on or off with the uh, multiply symbol. There's also another one right here. Your speedometer, don't worry about this guy, he's not important. Uh, you've got a spare uh, engine number, this is what engine number you're on if you ever forget, which it does happen. Um, that is about it. I'm going to hit control page up to set the independent all the way on. You see that the needle comes up there. Uh, this is another thing that's a little buggy. Sometimes the air, air doesn't, uh, doesn't make noise in the game. It's, it's locomotive dependent. They just got to go back through and, and check them all. Uh, this red light's on, that means that our parking brake's on. Just hit F5, that will knock that off. Uh, sometimes you may see that switch down, you want to make sure it's up. That's your generator field. The engine won't load, or the uh, main generator won't load if that switch is down. So, we're pretty much ready to go. We want to hit the insert key. That puts the reverser into forward you also notice that the engine rpms come up because these have a a uh, low idle feature which is used to save fuel so once you've done that hit the plus key on the number pad that puts it into notch one you see that we're loading amps what I normally do is kind of look out the window uh, down at the ground in this locomotive it's a little bit easier to do because you can see your your brake cylinder gauge and just hit page down get it down to about 20 psi and see what it's going to do so there's 20 we're not moving let's go down to 15 nothing 10 mm, looks like it might be wanting to move a little bit more there you go it starts to move that little beeping that you heard that was the EOT that tells us that the EOT is now moving we're going to pull just a little bit further with it and go ahead and completely let off your independent. Now these engines don't take off very fast because they're only 3,000 horsepower. 
Uh, we're still using 3 HPT, and we'll talk about HPT later on. Yes, I know that we just ran a red signal. Don't worry about that. This is just to get you going. So with that being said, I'm going to pull up the dispatcher screen. And we're going to go over to Varsto. You see there's our engine right there. We're going to go ahead and sell and click on this one. It's going to turn yellow, which means it'll drop to red once we pass it. We want to clear this one. And we want to stop at this one. So we're going to pretend that this switch, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and throw it. That switch is against us. So I can click that one and run it, uh, set it for clear, but it's still going to show me a red because that, that route's, we don't have a, a, a good route. So we got the signal set now. You see that we're coming up about 20 miles an hour. I'm going to hit shift N to show me what the current track speed is, which means we can only go 30. So we're running 20 right now, so we're not going to get too much, not going to get too much more speed because uh, uh, this is a little bit of a downhill. It's kind of level once we get past this crossing up here. Um, and that's pretty much it. We just stay at notch one. If it looks like it's going to get going too fast, then we just bring it back down to idle. Uh, if we get over about 25, I probably will go ahead and bring it back down to idle. So. If you can see it, but there's a whistle post right there. Get myself over here a little bit, a little bit easier to see. And we'll blow for this crossing. had to turn my bell on because I forgot this one doesn't have the uh, the automatic bell when you blow the horn. Some engines do, some engines don't. And that's just the decimal key or the delete key on your number pad. So there you see our speed's trying to creep up, but we've already passed the 50 mile an hour limit, so we're good to go. So we can go ahead and grab notch two. And if you want to see your train stats, you can hit Shift V. That tells you your horsepower, how many tons you're pulling, what loads you got, empties, number of axles, your dynamic braking axles, and the length of your train. Um, you can cycle through all these. That's your uh, brake indicator. This is your train stats. This is if you're working the ground uh, and you're controlling it like a remote. This gives you your readout. This is for your sim FPS, uh, which direction you're facing, ambient temperature outside, and what your location is on the map. And then Shift Z just cycles through all of them. We're going to leave up the Shift N one. You see that we're still good for 50. We'll go ahead and grab another notch. This is a short train, so it responds fairly quickly, so don't get too carried away with it. Um, I mean, we're running roughly 6,000 horsepower at the head end on a train that's less than a thousand feet long so yeah it's gonna it's gonna pick up pretty quick now there is a pretty pretty significant hill coming up here so I don't want to get to going too fast so we are going to go ahead and grab notch four just kind of get to going here You see we're up about 35. We want to keep it below 40, and I'll show you why in just a second. And this is where knowing the railroad comes in handy, because we don't want to get going too fast for what we're about to do, because it won't work. So between 35 and 40 is about where I want to be. There's no accelerometer on this one, so you have to pretty much run it by eye. Uh, these needles will bounce back and forth. Uh, whenever, uh, if slack runs in on you, you'll see that needle bounce, and that's what they would do in real life. They they would bounce on you, and that tells you that you've you've got something pushing you from behind. So this is why we didn't want to get going too fast. You can tell there's a pretty steep hill right there. So we're going to keep a close eye on the speedometer. Once the speedometer starts creeping back up, we're going to want to come down. I don't know if you noticed that, but the, the engine just went downhill. 
you see the speedometer starting to creep up, so we're going to start dropping the, the uh, notches. Go down to two, go down to one, and go down to idle. Now there's two things you can do. If you feel like you're going to bust the speed, now in real life you can't use the air brake, but you can always use the air brake here. Uh, or you can go ahead, once you crest over that hill, you would set up your dynamics, and then you would just wait for it, and then you would ride them down here, but you have to be able to come back out of them before you start back uphill. See, there you see we're up at 35, or 45 now. I'm still trying to creep up a little bit. We might make 50 before we have to start powering on again. There's so that's about 47. Coming upon our next signal here. It should be a clear. And the speedometer is starting to level off. And there's going to be another rise just beyond this signal see right there how it starts going back up again see a little bit of a rise and then it levels back off we don't want to get too carried away in here because this terrain is rolling so when you get into rolling terrain like that part of your train is going uphill part of it's going downhill and you can get away from what you're trying to do in a hurry so we're just gonna let it cruise here for just a second just kind of watch the speedometer and see what it does it's holding speed. Looks like it is trying to start backing off just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and grab notch one just to get everything everything pulled out. You see that speedometer is just it's bouncing just a little bit. That means the train just stretched back out. That means the train's pulling back on us and it's actually making the speedometer drop. It's it's very subtle, but if you if you look at it long enough, you can see what it's doing. That's why some of these older speedometers, they're they're better, they're a better judge of what your train's doing than the new ones with the fancy accelerometers on them and everything. Alright, so we're holding pretty steady. I don't want to get too much because this this area of track can be a little little finicky because it's it's level it's in a curve and it's level. level. You got part of your train's coming downhill, part of it's going up. It's level through here. You're getting ready to go into a curve, and then it, it's it's a high banked curve, so it doesn't bite you as much as as some other curves will. And there you see we're, we're accelerating just a little bit. So I'm going to leave it alone, and then you see there's another curve right here. It's another banked curve, but uh, it's going uphill. So we're just going to kind of ride it, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch anything yet. We're still just going to ride a notch one, because I th think we're going to be below it before we get there. Matter of fact, we just did start uphill, so it should start spilling off here in just a second. There's 54, and I can tell you exactly how fast we're going. It's saying it said 55.1, but I'm going by my speedometer, and my speedometer said 54, so the speedometer is not calibrated right. Alright, so we've got a new signal, and it's a blinking yellow light, which is going to be an approach medium. And just to read off the rule for the approach mediums, it says proceed, prepared to pass, next signal not exceeding 40 miles per hour, and be prepared to enter diverging route at prescribed speed. So we need to start slowing to 40. So we will go ahead and drop this down to idle. Uh, because we know that we're getting ready to start on a downhill, we're going to go ahead and set up our dynamics with the divide key on the number pad. Just wait just a second, you'll listen to the to the engine. Once the engine gets up to its RPM, you can go ahead and start hitting the minus key. You'll see that the uh, needle starts coming over into the yellow, meaning that you're setting up brakes. You see one, hit it again, there's 15, and it's it's not a perfect science, but that would be 20. We want to 
want to get it up to at least 30 to really start breaking. So there's 30 or three or whichever one you want to call it. On the on the cab units, it will it'll say uh, it'll give you a 30 or a 35 or a 15 or a 20. So we want to get down below 40 miles per hour. Now one thing to note about these is that it does not give you the signal indication speed. It tells you that you just passed an approach medium, but it won't tell you what your speed is. It just tells you what the track speed is. So even though we are, even though it is saying that the track speed is 55, the signal indication speed is to, to slow to 40. We'll go, on, we'll go on up to 40. Get it on down, because I know what the next one's gonna be. So there's 40. I'm going to back off a little bit, but not much because the next signal is a yellow over a red. So a solid yellow over a solid red is an approach. And the rule for approach is proceed prepared to stop at next signal, trains exceeding 30 miles per hour immediately reduced to that speed. So we're going to get below 30 with the expectation that the next signal that we're going to see will be a red. That's what that rule is for. So we're going to go ahead and put 5 on that. We're going to get it down. We want to be between 20 and 25 miles an hour. This is a short train, so we can, uh, we don't need quiet as much buffer room but we do want to get do want to get it slow enough to where we can stop the speed's coming down good now because we're starting on an uphill so we can go ahead and start bringing the dynamics back down you got to remember part of the train is still going downhill so it's still going to push on us so there's 25 it's holding we'll bring it down a little bit more Is that my signal or is it the next one? That is my signal, okay. Just wanted to make sure, because I there's some of these places there's two signals, one will be facing one way, the other one will be facing the other. I just wanted to make sure I'm on the right bird, the uh, right aspect. So we will have to stop before we pass that signal. So we're just gonna let it go. Probably gonna have to switch back over to power to let it get up this hill. We'll just have to see. coming on down we might not have to now generally speaking uh, we can stop anywhere in this block uh, so long as our entire train is in the block so uh, if I can see the signal way back there I can actually slow down to like five miles an hour and just crawl through here if I can see the signal. If I if I see that that's a stop signal ahead of me, and unless the dispatcher says, hey, you're going to be waiting there for three hours, I can slow down to a crawl. You know, as fast as I can keep the train rolling and just let it creep. And that way, let's say that there's a train that's crossing over the ladders here and it's going down this track, so that way it can go into the yard. Uh, I can crawl up this hill right here. I'll just do that. We'll put it back into setup here and put it back into power because we got enough. Go ahead and knock that off and then let the engine settle. And we just pull notch one on it and just let it start pulling. You see the speedometer bouncing there? That means that all the cars are, are uh, stretching out. But yeah, let's say that we're, we're coming up to this signal. We can see the train going across, down the ladder track, going uh, going over here into the lead. And they're gonna go into the yard. And we can see that, and if dispatchers told us, you know, hey, I got a train, I'm gonna run ahead of you. Um, as soon as they're clear, I'm gonna let you go. 
you just kind of crawl through here. And the reason for that is so that you don't have to stop. Because starting a train and stopping a train are probably the two most aggravating things to do. Especially on long trains. This one's fairly short, so it's not that bad. So, you know, you might crawl along here 5-10 miles an hour and just let it creep and creep and creep. And then once heat clears and then once the dispatcher will give you a gets the switch line back and gets the uh, gives you the signal, then all you got to do is just pull the throttle out and you keep on going. You don't have to worry about stretching the train back out, you know, getting everything going in the right direction, blah, 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 blah. Everything's already moving. It's so much easier to just keep it rolling than it is to stop and start over, all that sort of stuff, because you have to set the brakes and you got to wait for the brakes to recharge and just, it, you know, takes time. It's boring. So if, anytime you can keep the train moving, keep it moving. Because like I said, we're just creeping on up to this thing right here. The top of the hill is actually where the signal is too. And if you notice beyond that, there's a, once you get on the other side of that crossing, there's a huge drop off and then there's another, another pretty, pretty large hill where uh, I think that's Newberry Water or um, has a water plant or something right there. Now to stop this train, I'm going to break, break the current operating rules for uh, uh, most railroads. I think all the railroads disavow this now. So I'm going to stop on air. We're going roughly 12 miles an hour. Yeah, 11, 12, close enough. And what I'm going to do is we're going to draw down air. So the automatic brake works with the home and end key. Home, end, and the period key on your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the home key once. And then hold the period key. And you notice that the equalizing reservoir drew down 5 pounds. Brake pipe followed it. And the reason why you're holding the P key is that bails off the independent so that the air pressure doesn't build up on it. So your locomotives don't have any air on them. Or the, uh, the cylinders on the locomotives don't have any air. I'm going to go ahead and hit the minus key, let the brakes drag down, and it should stop fairly close. Probably going to be too far away. You want to stop far enough away that you can see the signal. Go back into notch one. need any more air it's just going to kind of drag here for just a little bit and then it should come down to a stop we'll just whenever we get to a good place all we got to do is close the throttle Probably going to be good enough, so we'll just go ahead and close the throttle, and it'll crawl on down to a stop. Once you're stopped, you want to set the independent, so control page up. You see that the independent is coming on. You want to go ahead and set down a full service, and we'll just watch the equalizing reservoir until it gets down to about 25. So about right there, you see there's 25 down, I'm sorry, not 25, there's 15 down, so we want to hit 20, right there. Not quite the full service, we'll just pull 20 down and call it done. Um, reverse or centered, go ahead and throw the, the generator field switch. The locomotive is now in what, you, what a lot of places will call three-step protection. Reverse is centered. Throttle is in, uh, in idle. Generator field is, is off. Some of them, it, it depends. It's, it's one of those things where sometimes they'll say full service applied or, you know, whatever. The three main ones are um, brakes, generator field, reverser. Because generally, if your reverser is centered, then you don't really have to worry about the throttle. Um, but like I said, some places it's reverser, throttle, generator field. Some of them it's reverser, uh, brake, and uh, generator field. The two, the two ones that are in all of them are generator field and reverser. Um, 
And the reason why I say throttle is sometimes when you're working with steam locomotives, it's throttle and not, not necessarily brake. Anyway, that is running a train. These are the, these are a little bit more complicated to run than the, than the newer units like the, the 4400s or the 70s. Oh, and turn the, not the headlight back down to medium. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, these are because these are all analog and it's it's more run by feel. Um, the 4400s they give you so many readouts, it's, it's ridiculous. And the SD70s are even even more advanced. They give you a lot more readouts and a lot more control over it. They're a lot nicer to run to. They're a lot more quiet. I like running the 40s just because um, I just like this this style of stuff. This is how I learned to run on engines like this where you're having to actually read your gauges. And uh, the nice thing about Run 8 is that these gauges, they work, and you can actually run off of them. The speedometers are a little off, which is true in real life. That's one of the reasons why you give yourself a little bit of a buffer. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much running in uh, getting a train started and whatnot. So... Uh, I'll leave it there and then we'll do something different in the next one. So uh, I'll see you then.